I am studying black-footed ferrets. We're looking at the impacts of sylvatic plague on their genetic diversity and also trying to um, reconstruct parentage to learn more about their breeding system. So we're studying a specific group of black-footed ferrets in Badlands National Park and Kanata Basin, the surrounding areas and the population, which was at 300 individuals, dropped to 30 individuals. So I went out to the Badlands National Park for two weeks this summer to work with our collaborators uh, at Prairie Wildlife Research. They have been studying the ferrets out there for years, since basically since reintroduction started. Um, they've been sending us samples since 2000. Here in the lab, we are using hair samples that we've collected from the wild ferrets. Uh, we're extracting DNA from those hair samples and then using a couple of different genetic markers to understand the genetic diversity of these animals. When we conserve the black-footed ferret, we have to conserve prairie dogs. Prairie dogs are 98% of their diet, they pretty much only eat prairie dogs, um, and they also use prairie dog burrows for their shelter. So we have to conserve prairie dogs to conserve ferrets, and prairie dogs are one of the kind of formative agents of the prairie. They eat the grass, they form prairie dog colonies, they provide shelter for animals like burrowing owls and rattlesnakes and everything. So in protecting the ferrets, we're really protecting the entire ecosystem. I think one of the unique things about it is that it's kind of a success story. And you know, they were extinct in the wild, but they brought them in for captive breeding, and then they started releasing them. And now we have ferrets in basically all of the Great Plains states. There are ferrets in Mexico and Canada now. So through human intervention, we've really been able to make a difference.